What's up YouTube? Back here with another video today. In today's video we're going to be working on the lightning and grinding down our rear calipers for 15 inch race stars or drag wheels. Basically to fit a 15 inch wheel on the truck you have to clearance the rear brake calipers and by doing that you have basically have to grind a lot of material off of them for them to clear. And we're going to be going over everything you need to do in order to fit your 15 inch race wheels on your truck. And yeah, that's what we're going to be doing for the Lightning because we have a new wheel package coming. We're basically going to be running 15 inch race stars with some radials in the back. And then I also have bought some 17 by 7s for the front for dailying. And then we get the 17 by 4.5 for when we want to go run a number and race. So we're going to go ahead and dive right into this video, guys. All right. So here's my 15 inch race stars that we're trying to make fit. We're not necessarily going to run this slick. I mean, I might use it up a little bit and try to do some launches and see what happens, but I do want a more dailyable tire. But those are the wheels. Those are the, uh, these are the skinnies for the front for when I want to race. The 17 by 7s aren't here yet, but we did order those, and those are on the way. And basically what you need to do is you have two options. You can grind your stock calipers for clearance, or you can buy the aerospace components kit. The aerospace kit is nice, and you do lose some weight. However, it's not recommended for the street, so I didn't really want to do that. Plus, it's 1500 bucks, and you still have to grind on the calipers a little bit for them to clear. So I didn't feel comfortable spending, you know, thousand plus dollars to still have to grind on it. So I just, I'm going to take a chance on the stock calipers. I bought an extra set from a guy on the forums. That way, if anything happens, I can just put my, my the ones I had on there back on. So I'm grinding on an extra set just in case even though this is a proven method and I've seen it done you know probably 10 15 times of people I personally know and they've never had a problem so basically what you're gonna need is a four inch angle grinder some grinding discs that's pretty much it you can see we uh, tarped the truck off with some painters tarp because I didn't want the dust getting all over my paint and you probably don't want that either because this iron dust sticks to everything it's a pain in the ass to get off you actually need a special cleaning chemical to get it off your paint so i suggest taping your truck off at least this back end here i went ahead and went all the way up just because better be safe than sorry i really didn't want to grind at all honestly and i bought some already ground down the calipers i bought were already clearanced for 15 inch wheels however they were clearance for bogarts and race stars seem to be the smallest of all the 15 inch wheels believe it or not there is differences and varying factors between the different manufacturers so but anyways we did one side already this side here as you can see I don't know how much you guys can see of that has been ground down quite a bit I'll show you this one first and then we'll go to the other side and show you the differences but we ground all the tops and the race star actually slides on there now and basically what you want to do is just remove material little by little you just we took the caliper off and did these ears only first and we'll show you that when we do the other side but we just took some off tried to fit it took some off try to fit it until it clears same thing with the caliper put the caliper on and just take it off little by little and just keep test fitting every you know probably five or ten minutes and just do it till it clears and then what you'll do is you'll take some tape or you can paint the tops of these and you just paint it put the wheel on spin it take the wheel off see if any paint came off grind there and just keep repeating until no more paint or you can layer like a couple layers of tape on there and you just keep doing that until no more tape comes off and then you're good to go so we haven't done all that yet we basically just ground it until the wheel could fit on there you spin it there's a little bit of resistance so I think it is rubbing somewhere still but we'll get to that later so yeah so we're gonna get the other side to this point here show you how to do that you also have to trim your dust shield there's normally a dust shield right here I trimmed it slightly smaller than the rotor so you don't see it because it is going to look a little jagged when you trim it and I'll show you what I'm talking about so we're gonna go ahead and go to the other side and show you what we're dealing with basically there's the other the other wheel for this side but this is your stock setup as you can see you got this dust shield right here and to remove that, all you're going to need is a pair of tin snips. And I basically took my rotor off 
and then just tin snip around. Uh, we'll get to that. You're also going to need a four inch angle grinder for the grinding you need to do with some with plenty of grinding wheels. I went through one on the other side. Probably go through one on this side and then you'll need another one to do the touch ups and when you're painting and grinding, painting and grinding. But that's pretty much it. You really don't need a whole lot. $15 at Harbor Freight. The wheels were like five bucks. This was like ten bucks. Not a big deal. But yeah, this is your stock setup. Got this dust shield here you're gonna have to trim. And you can see how much material is on the stock caliper and look how thick these are here. We had to take those down a lot. It was almost paper thin towards the ends. But pretty much just grind, test fit, and repeat until it fits. So what we're gonna do first is just undo these two bolts and remove the stock caliper. We're gonna leave it attached and just kind of hang it somewhere. And then we are gonna get to work on pulling this rotor off and trimming the dust shield. All right, so this part's a little bit of a pain, but once you get a rhythm, it gets easier. Basically, just want to keep wiggling your tin snips and you'll get a little piece that starts peeling away. And just keep bending it away as you wiggle it in there and just keep cutting. But basically, that's all you're gonna do and you just want to trim that back some for clearance. It is a pain and it takes a minute to figure it out, but once you get a rhythm, it's not too bad. And once we get this all the way trimmed around, we can go back and kind of trim these sharp edges and make it a little more round looking and better. But it's a pain in the ass to do with the camera, so I'm gonna come back to you when it's all done. All right, so that's all finished up. Here's the little strip that peeled off. Like I said, once you find a rhythm, it's not too bad. Just getting it in there, and you just keep pulling it back, getting it in there, pulling it back all the way around. And that's all trimmed up now. We'll put our rotor back on. Now you can't even see it. It's not bad. I just did it slightly smaller than a rotor all the way around. It's basically right up here towards the edge. But that way you can't see the jagged edges. It will be a little jagged. It's not going to be perfect. I mean, it's really difficult to get to to begin with. But it's not too bad. It is possible. At first, I was freaking out. I mean, it is. It's not easy until you find your rhythm that that's for sure it's definitely a pain in the ass but once you find a rhythm you can get it done it is possible it's hanging there but <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and start grinding these ears down until they match the other side everything clears a lot of test fitting but once you get everything to clear it's basically this this midsection here and then I had problems with this corner here so you just keep taking material off of that till it clears on both these ears here and then we can put the caliper on and start doing that so closer Alright, so we took quite a bit off this first ear here. You can see, look at the thickness difference between the two. That's the front of that one. 
look at that. And that's the one we have yet to grind. You can see how much you have to take off. I mean, it's quite a bit. I'm not sure if it's doing any justice or not, but so far we've taken off quite a bit of material. We're going to leave it there for now. I think we took off a good amount to start. We'll do this bottom one the same as we did the top, and then we'll start test fitting, and you basically just grind, test fit, grind, test fit, until you have a nice bit of clearance. With these ears, with the wheel on, I just get behind the wheel, have a light shine through the front, and you can kind of see where the gap is, where it's touching and whatnot. But these ears, quite a bit of material has to come off. So we're gonna keep grinding, and we'll let you know when we're done. All right, so we're back. We're finally done grinding the ears. Everything clears now. We did a lot of test fitting and finally got it to fit. But that's what we're left with. You can see how much thinner they were they are compared to what they were. You have to take quite a bit of material off of this angled portion here. When it angles out, that seems to be what touches the most. So we really sharpen those down kind of towards the front. And that's what we got. And everything clears now. So now we're moving on to the calipers themselves. These, like I said, are already ground down for Bogarts, so we're probably still gonna have to take a little bit off because Race Star seems to be the smallest of all the 15s. You have to take the most amount of material off. But you can see how much material they had to take off compared to stock. I mean, it even left the flat on the piston area there. You gotta be very careful not to break through because then you'll have leaks and all kinds of problems. So be very careful around this piston area. Just keep grinding and grinding and grinding. Lots of grinding and test fitting, but you can see how much more this has opened up now compared to the ones you probably have on there now. Just hopefully this video will be good and you can use it as like a reference. That's why I'm trying to get good angles and views of everything. That way you'll be able to just kind of use this as a visual reference when you do yours. I mean, it's pretty simple, just a lot of grinding and test fitting, but we're gonna go ahead and just dust the top of this and take a little off. Um, I sent the wife up to get some new brake pads while we're at it. Figure while we're right here. You will have to, every time you do your brake pads, you'll have to grind the ears down a little bit for clearance, but that's not a big deal whatsoever. Um, you can just, whenever you take the old ones off after you get everything to fit, you can just grind them the same, put them on, good to go. But I sent her to get new brake pads. May as well do it while we're here. We'll grind the ears down on the new ones so they clear. But more grinding, grinding away. Alrighty guys, so we're back. We got the calipers ground down to where I think they will clear. We test fitted, everything felt like it cleared pretty good. We put our brand new brake pads in there and touched the ears of those as well. You do have to grind these ears down a, quite a bit, but it's not a real big deal. The brake pad material is not really that tough and it just comes right off. But everything looks like it's gonna clear. So what we did is we just took some spray paint, shook it up, spray it into the can till it pulls up. That way we can use the brush and paint it on. Basically, you just want to paint the tops of these. Nice little layer of paint. Something bright so you'll be able to see when it rubs off. And just paint the tops. Let it dry for a little bit. I don't know, just till it gets a little tacky and, you know, not wet. Uh, slide the wheel on. Spin it. Take the wheel off. See where the paint comes off. And wherever the paint rubs off, you just take your grinder and touch that area some more. Paint it. Repeat just a lot of repetitiveness it's not really that difficult it's just time consuming and repetitive and you might get a little sore from wheel up wheel down wheel up wheel down underneath the truck back up underneath you know just a lot of repetitiveness but it's not that bad guys it just it's time consuming but we'll let that dry for a little bit put the wheel on there see if any paint comes off and get this finished up all right guys so we're pretty much done this is what you're going to end up with and this is what it's gonna look like. We pretty much, you can see how much we had to flat the piston there. I mean, it gets really sketchy and really close, but basically, rule of thumb, grind till you don't feel comfortable and then grind some more. I mean, it is just crazy the amount that's gonna come off, but we're pretty much done. We got it to where the wheel free spins and it doesn't really touch anymore. If it does, it's very little. And basically what we're gonna do is just take an even amount off the top Take these back off, we'll paint them the orange we want, put them on there, and then we'll just do any little touch-ups then. But pretty much are there and are all done. It is gonna be a little frustrating when you paint the tops. You'll put it on, you'll spin it, you'll see where it's touching, you'll grind there, and then it's gonna to touch somewhere completely different the next time, completely, and you just basically just gotta chase it around 
until it doesn't touch anymore. And I think it took six hours yesterday to do this side. It took a little longer. I mean, we did kind of take our time and take breaks in between and whatnot. So, I mean, if you knock it out and just really focus, you can probably get it done quicker. We were just kind of relaxed and taking our time, but we were all done. And uh, we'll go ahead and mount the wheel real quick so you guys can at least see what it looks like. So there she is all mounted up, looking good. You can see just how, let me get the light. You can see how tight it is in there. I mean, it is crazy tight, not a whole lot of clearance at all. But we did get everything cleared, and I'm happy about that, we're all done, so that's good. Um, like I said, I'm just gonna take those off, take a little bit off the top, take them off, paint them, and then we should be good to go. A um, couple things to keep in mind that you're going to need to know if you buy a set of 15s. If you buy them used and you have trouble with the lugs going into these holes here, all you have to do is take a piece of sandpaper, wrap it around a socket that fits in there, put it on a drill and just kind of ream them out a little bit. Basically the material difference between the wheel and the lugs, there are two different types of materials and with hard launches and stuff the material will transfer into each other and basically just gall up a little bit and it'll cause difficulty in the lugs going in. So like I said, take a piece of sandpaper, wrap it around a socket that fits in there and just kind of drill it out a little bit. Or you could use a Dremel just to kind of clean the holes out. But it's not a big deal. To prevent that in the future, you can also use some anti-seize on the lugs and that should help, the, uh, help prevent material transfer from the lugs to the wheels or whatever. So. It's not a real big deal. It's an easy fix. Just keep that in mind if you're buying these used and the lugs don't seem to fit in there. Not a big deal. Take your Dremel, clean it out, however you want to do it. But pretty much all you need to know is that and that you're going to need to clearance the hell out of your calipers. And then after that, you're pretty much good to go, though. A lot more tire selection on the 15s. Um, a lot more sidewall as well, which is obviously better for launching, but... That's what we decided to do, and man does it look good. I can't wait to see it on the ground without all this wheel gap here, of course. But yeah, it's looking really, really good, so I'm pretty stoked about that. So yeah, I think that's gonna be about it for this video. Like I said, there's not a whole lot to it besides just a lot of grinding and test fitting. That's all there is. It's just a lot of time-consuming work you gotta put in. It's not really necessarily difficult, just a lot of time is gonna be poured into it. But I think it's going to be worth it. I think it's going to look really good sitting on a nice tire in the back. But um, yeah, we have a hurricane coming, so we're probably not going to be able to finish this up right now. Probably have to wait till all the bad weather passes. I want to paint them when it's in good weather, when it doesn't come out like crap. And then once we get the calipers painted, we mount the wheels back on, finish up any little touch-ups we have to do as far as clearancing, then we're good to go on that. We have our 17 by 7s coming in this week as well. We already have the tires inside. But uh, basically next video you should be seeing this thing sitting on a whole new wheel setup. And we'll see how it looks. I'm not sure what to do with the wheels yet. I don't know if I should leave them polished. Or I was thinking about painting them our usual gunmetal with flake. Uh, I think the gunmetal goes really good with the carbon fiber hood. But I also do want to do something different. So I was thinking about leaving them polished for a little bit and just kind of seeing how it looks. Let me know in the comments below what I should do as far as like color choice for the wheels. But yeah, not 100% sure on that yet. So I guess we'll see. But anyways, guys, make sure you drop a thumbs up if you like the video. Make sure you leave a comment down below and uh, subscribe for more if you haven't already. See you all next time.